My students keep on saying, I never knew this happened. So in 2012, there was a lot, there was a lot of news about Asian Americans. They were called Rise of the Tiger Nation, the best educated, highest earning, and fastest growing racial group in the United States. It was a success story where Asian Americans had achieved the American dream. The Pew Research Center also did a research uh, report on the rise of Asian Americans, calling us the happiest of all uh, Americans. <laughs> a lot of that success was due to our adherence to so-called Asian values of traditional hard work, respect for authority, filial piety, um, and success. New York Knicks um, player, the underdog, he was an underdog from Harvard, he was um, undrafted at the end of the game, <laughs> was about 36 hours from being dropped, and he took his team to some unprecedented um, success. Who is this? Tiger Mom. Again, in 2012, the Tiger Mom, Amy Chua, another underdog, a Yale prof law professor, who described in her book, Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother, how Chinese parenting, strict Chinese parenting, was the way to achieve um, American success. So scratch the surface, and I want to ask a larger and more complex question. In the early 20th century, Asian Americans were what, were what one could call America's despised minority. How did we move so quickly from being excluded and segregated and incarcerated to the model minority? This is a cartoon from the 1880s. It describes the coming menace of Chinese immigration, a racial threat, a threat to American workers, uh, someone who's going to monopolize American business. This is not the type of immigrant that the United States wanted, and we did it. There was great extreme racial violence. This is not often talked about in American history, but the greatest, uh, largest mass lynching in American history was in LA in 1871, and it involved 17 Chinese immigrants. Another racial violence was the massacre of Rock Springs, Wyoming in 1885. It wasn't just Chinese. South Asians, derogatorily called Hindus, were also driven out from cities in the American West. This is a newspaper article from the Bellingham Herald in Washington in 1907. It set a pattern of segregation, exclusion, discrimination against um, Asian immigrants. A more disturbing letter that made it into the Bancroft Library archives at UC Berkeley describing the extreme racial hatred directed toward Filipino laborers who were uh, predominantly farmers, migrant farm workers in California. All of these um, sentiments of anti-racial violence became international during World War II, when the concern was that Japanese immigrants in the United States were actually not peaceful immigrants, but rather a colonizing force ready to wait for the signal from home when they could then do the bidding of the Japanese Empire, an internal enemy. And this uh, decision, these ideas, <coughs> led to the mass removal and incarceration of Japanese Americans from the West Coast during World War II. So this is a long history of, of racism, discrimination, and targeting of Asian Americans. And this is one of the paradoxes of Asian American history, is how do we turn from this very institutionalized history of segregation to then uh, Asian Americans becoming the model minority. And it happens as a result of both domestic and international factors. This is a photograph of removal of Japanese Americans during World War II. And I wanted to ask the question, where do Asian Americans fit into American society, and what purpose do these stereotypes about Asian Americans serve? These are not just stereotypes that crackpots had that were at the margins of American society. They were at the very foundations. And this transition happens, as I said, with both domestic and international events. After World War II, Japan, the enemy race, became our ally, a very important ally during the Cold War. They were going to be the bulwark of uh, American capitalism and democracy in a fragile region, Asia, that's about to become um, problematized or invaded by communists. The Chinese Communist Revolution happened in 1949, and then, of course, the United States becomes involved in Korea in the 1950s, we become increasingly involved in Southeast Asia by our own putting our own troops and becoming politically involved there. At the same time, we see at, in the home front 
these new ideas about Asian Americans being the color of success. They are seen as um, minorities who, yes, had been experienced uh, lots of discrimination, but now were succeeding at unprecedented rates. They proved that the American dream could work. This is Congressman Dalek Singh Song, who was the first Asian American congressman uh, elected to the US Congress, and he spread this message about he, uh, him being the living proof of American democracy <coughs> around the world. And so this message of Asian American success, because they were uh, uh, nuclear families, they worked hard, had an international message, but also at a time of increasing radicalism about systemic discrimination in the United States, it also served the purpose of delegitimizing those complaints, delegitimizing the complaints that African Americans, for one, had about ongoing discrimination. Asian Americans did not uh, fully <coughs> embrace the model minority. In the 1960s, they joined up with other people of color, students, activists, um, to create the ethnic studies movement, to talk about recognition, to dispel the model minority uh, stereotype, and this continues on today's campuses. That Asian American students, this is a campaign from UC San Diego, are like uh, the women in the lean in movement trying to use their own voices to explain how they uh, also reject this damaging stereotype that on the surface may appear good, um, but in fact uh, masks some inner realities through this Thank you very much.